Do 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 do. Christmas time in the city. What time is it? Ooh, I'm late. Damn, I gotta get it. Come on, it needs it. Let's go. Oh jeez, it's almost time. Oh, I wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New. Oh, hi, James from Ingvid. Uh, sorry. Christmas edition. Um, I want to discuss today some Christmas idioms that you may hear your English colleagues or friends using and might be confused by. But today you're going to become a master of merriment and learn about Christmas idioms. So let's go to the board. E What's this ho, ho, ho? Well, ho, ho, ho is said by a very famous guy in, uh, in North America, we call him Santa Claus. In England, they call him Father Christmas, or you might say uh, the British side call him Father Christmas. He's known by many names. But with this gentleman, who's a little bit rotund, sort of like myself right now, and wearing a special hat, come a few things, a few, you might say, activities that we do uh, from trimming a tree, decking the halls. And you're like, what is he talking about? And that's what you're going to learn today. So we're going to go to the board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what these things are. And I also want to give you a little bit of history. And that way you can appreciate some of the culture that you find in people who speak English. Or I wouldn't say European, but English speaking peoples. Ready? Let's go to the board. The first thing I want to look at is stocking stuffer. It's really weird because stocking stuffer is almost nothing like it is today. When you go to somebody's house, if they have a fireplace, you know, so here's some fire, yay from fire, they will have these giant socks here. Well, in the old days, socks used to be referred to as stockings, not socks, but stockings, because you would put them on your feet and you would pull them, oh, there we go, yeah, like that, all the way up, see? Now I'm European gentleman. Ah, European gentlemen, socks up here. Okay, so <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. Okay, so so they had stockings, not socks. Now, stocking stuffer is a little present. For instance, if my watch is coming here, if I got a, something this small and I put it inside the stocking, it's very small. Usually stocking stuffers are not big and not expensive. But there is an interesting story that goes with a stocking stuffer. A long time ago in Germany, where this originates from, uh, Germany, there's a story about three young girls, or an old, a man who had three daughters. And he really wanted his daughters to marry and be happy, but he had no money to give them to help them get married. So he prayed and he prayed, and Santa Claus, remember the guy I said? Ho, 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 ho. I really should draw a picture of him, but I'm sure there'll be a picture of him right there. Okay. Santa Claus overheard this man talking about, I cannot um, get someone for my daughters um, to marry them, so what I want to do, I don't know what I'm going to do. And Santa Claus knew that this man did not accept charity. In other words, this man would not take anything for free. He always wanted to work for it. So he decided, instead of giving presents like he normally did, he was going to throw three bags of gold down the chimney one night so the man could receive them and each bag would be for the daughters. The daughters were unaware of this and they were wearing their, remember we talked about stockings, these things? Oh, one second. Uh, stockings, <laughs> okay. Um, they put their stockings to dry at night by the fireplace because they had washed them. So of course, when they woke up in the morning, their stockings, the three of them, were filled with gold. Ah, and that's why you find a lot of times when people have stockings, they get chocolate coins that are covered in gold inside their stockings. Yeah, see? Cool. And they're like, I know some things. You do. All right. So the first one I talked about is the stocking stuffer. Little presents that go inside the stockings that used to be on fireplaces, but maybe if it's not by a fireplace now, you'll find them on the wall or by people's stairs and they'll have their names on it and people will put chocolate inside of it or markers or pens or something small that somebody might have fun with, but not expensive. The second one I want to talk about is to trim the tree. If you ask any North American about trimming the tree, or English person for that matter, 
they will tell you trimming the tree is putting, as you can see, I have some balls up here, and this would be called tinsel. They would say putting balls and tinsel on the tree to make it look very nice. Extra stuff that goes on the tree. And they're correct. Or are they? Okay, so where did this come from? Trimming the tree came from actually sailors, nautical sailors a long time ago, and it was to be trim and in fighting shape, which means to get rid of the fat, not be fat, but be slim and muscular in fighting shape, to be trim, to cut. I know you're very smart and you're saying to me, how does trim a tree, a sailor, have anything to do with each other? I'm getting there. A long time ago, most people didn't have artificial trees. In fact, when I was a child, most of the trees that I knew were real. People would go out and actually cut down a tree and put it inside their house. Yes, you heard me right. You knew people, you knew kids. No artificial trees. We'd actually go outside, cut it, pick it up, carry it into the house, put it in. And really far back, they actually used to put candles, yes. They used to put fire in the tree in the house. Hey, I don't know how humanity has made it this long, but uh, you know, whatever. So trimming the tree was, when you had the tree, sometimes there would be an extra branch sticking out that could poke you or hurt you. So you would cut this off to make the tree perfect to put in your house. Trim, because trim is actually a verb to means to cut off excess or extra. I'll give you another little thing that you're gonna like a lot as well. Sometimes you'll hear people say, I want a turkey dinner with all the trimmings. No, they're not asking for the pieces of the tree that fell down, absolutely not. It's the extra. So when you get turkey dinner, you get turkey, and then you get potatoes. Okay, that's like a normal meal and maybe some carrots. With the trimmings, you're gonna get cranberry sauce, gravy, stuffing, and some other stuff that people like to eat that I think is disgusting, but whatever, I don't know, I don't even ask it. But all the trimming means all the extra. In fact, people even say outside, they'll go, I want all the trimmings. It means all the extra. Because, and here's one for you getting haircuts, when you get a haircut and you say, I just want to trim, they're only going to cut a little bit of hair. Trim the extra, not a lot. Cool? Not only did you learn an idiom, you've learned about verbs. All right, so let's go from there. So trim the tree means to decorate the tree. But before that, it meant to cut the tree properly so you could decorate the tree. Okay, next, the holiday spirit. You heard me singing before, like, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Da, 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 da. It means to be in a good mood, right? Like, I'm in the holiday spirit. You saw me with my hat, right? Saw me draw the tree. He's festive. We're all happy. Festive means to be happy, joyful, festivities. The holiday spirit, that's what most people think. Actually, once again, it was actually based on religion. You see, a lot of our holidays are religious holidays that we celebrate today. So Christmas is around the, the birth of Christ. So a lot of people are saying get into the holiday, the holiday spirit. What they meant before was church, going to church, being with the body of the people, celebrating together as a family, as a unit. But now we've modified it because as we move on in time and sometimes separate religion from our festivities or holidays, it's to be in a good mood. Get the feeling of the, of the holiday. So Christmas is supposed to be happy and everybody's together in this community. And that's the holiday spirit. Christmas came early. First, I'm going to explain it to you. And then I'm going to explain it to you. When you say Christmas came early, it means you got unexpected good luck or a gift earlier than expected. So unexpected good luck, you did not expect it at all, or something came earlier than you expected. Like my Amazon shipments, I love it. You order a book, they say August 20th, it comes August 15th, I'm so happy. Christmas came early. Now the legend of Christmas came early is from New Mexico in the United States of America, where <laughs> what they would do, they would mix, okay, you have to understand that Christmas colors are red and green, okay? So the, the legend has it that they would mix for their breakfast burrito, because it had to be in the morning, okay? So you have your breakfast burrito, which is like, I don't know what if it's got eggs and whatever, but you have to have a red chili that's hot and a green chili that's hot. 
Okay, so imagine this. Hot chilies or hot peppers, red and green. So you don't have just the red one, you put the green ones together. You can see how much there is. And then you mix it into your breakfast burrito. So you can imagine you're eating it, and these things go down into you, into your tummy. And then within two hours, you're... And then before you know it, you have a bowel movement. <clears throat> bowel movement means poo-poo, ladies and gentlemen. You need to go to the bathroom early in the day because of your breakfast. See? You went to the washroom early. Red and green at Christmas. Whatever. Okay, so it's just, it's just a myth, urban myth. Just look it up. You don't have to believe me, okay? <laughs> but what it really does mean is you got an unexpected good luck or something came earlier than you expected. And it's a good thing, okay? Like a present is given to you. <clears throat> now let's go over here. I know this one's here. Just wait. Okay, I'll be there and bells on in a second. Beat the holiday blues. Holidays are supposed to be, actually that's kind of funny because holiday comes from holy day. In case you didn't know that, holy day in religion. And that's what I was talking about over here. Holy days are religious. But just in case, we'll just come back to it later. But beat the holiday blues. The funny thing about holidays is they're supposed to be fun times. You, um, you have friends and family together. There are parties. Uh, I know most, uh, most people in December. December stops about December 15th in most English-speaking countries. Also other European countries, but I'm, this is an English lesson, so I'm sticking with that. Around December 15th, things shut down. And I mean because there are a lot of office parties, people come together to socialize, to celebrate the Christmas season. And everybody's happy. They'll buy a little chocolate for each other. They'll say, how are you? And you're supposed to be happy. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, for some people, this causes a lot of stress. Because in having this happy season, there are expectations. Presents. If you don't have enough money, it's very difficult to buy presents. Especially for family members, you can't let them down going to many parties and having to be on all the time when maybe you just don't feel like it. There's a lot of pressure to be happy even if you're not. So beating the holiday blues is to feel good even though there's a lot of pressure on you. That's the first holiday blues. You know what the second holiday blues is? After the holidays. Let's say you're one of the people who had a great time. You danced a lot, got good presents, had a fantastic time. Holidays are over. You had two weeks vacation or a week's vacation. And then you go back to work and it's Monday, January the 2nd. And you're thinking, oh my God, I have another 12 months of this to go through. <laughs> and to beat those holiday blues is the second type of it where you have to go... Oh, okay, I got to get over the fact I had one week of fun, parties, presents, laughing and joy, and now I'm stuck at work for a year. Okay? Two types of holiday blues people will talk about. The second one is actually from psychologists. <laughs> Who knew? Good things come in little packages. Any woman who's ever got a, uh, a, an engagement ring knows this is true. What this means is that don't judge the value of something by the size of it. Most of you came from your mummy's tummies and you were babies. You were tiny. And your mom will say, I love you more than anything else. And you have grown. But you started from a tiny or a small package. Sometimes you'll hear good things come in small packages or sometimes you'll hear good things come in little packages. It means the same thing. Don't judge what something is by the size of it. The value isn't determined by size. It's by its actual value. And as I said, an engagement ring is small, comes in a small box but it makes somebody very happy for 10 to 20, or I should say for the rest of their life, but <laughs> it could be 20 years only, but whatever. Oh, I forgot one. I really want to put this up there, so I'm going to in a second. The more, the merrier. If you're in England, it's called Happy Christmas. So some of you watching from England go, James, you're wrong, it's not Merry Christmas. I don't know who told you that. Who told me that is the other side of the Atlantic. In North America, we refer to it as Merry Christmas. In England, they refer to it as a Happy Christmas. Even though they have merry-go-rounds, and merry is a word that means merriment in England, and over here we say happy for everything. I'm confused. Anyway, back to the fact that merry over here, we go Merry Christmas in English, they say Happy Christmas. Merry means happy. So when you say the more the merrier, what you're saying is the more people joining our party, the more people being with us or coming with us will actually make everything more fun. 
Okay? So you could say that you're going to a bar, and if Eve was there and he goes, Hey, James, are you going to the bar? And he goes, Can I come with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more the merrier. Come on. No problem. Come on down with us. Join us. Okay? So you'll hear people saying that. The other one you'll hear people say is White Christmas. You heard me say that Christmas colors are traditionally red and green, so why White Christmas? Well, in the year 2019, or I should actually from the year 2000s up, Christmas has not been as white as it used to be. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas meant snow. We always wanted snow on Christmas Day to come down and it looked beautiful. You'd be sitting outside, drinking eggnog and tea, looking at the white Christmas flakes coming down, opening presents by the fire. <laughs> now it's green and brown, and California is burning. Things have changed a lot. So when people talk about white Christmas, it was a reference to the old days where it would be white snow, warm out, people would wear their hats and go, hello, Uncle Bob, oh, look at it, it's festive. So we always hope for a white Christmas. We don't care about the day before or the day after. Just make it snow on Christmas Day to make it holiday-like and then forget it. Here's one I wanted to mention, and it's sort of like good things come in small or little packages. It's very similar. I forgot to write it on the board. So I'm going to erase and I'm going to write it for you. You might have seen this before or heard it. They're similar in meaning, but it's don't look. A uh, gift horse in its mouth. Okay, a gift is a present, okay? So you're saying a gift is a present, don't look at a house, its mouth. And it doesn't make any sense because why would you look at a gift horse in its mouth? Well, this isn't actually, uh, this is from the old days when we used horses more. If you don't know this about horse biology, I'll explain it. As horses get older, they got more teeth or the teeth got longer. They got longer, longer teeth. So in order to see how old a horse was, if you looked at its teeth, you could see if the teeth were really long, the horse was really old. If they were smaller, it's young. So you would check the horse's mouth to see the length of the teeth to know whether it was an old horse or a young horse. Now, this is similar to this. In this case, you're saying, don't estimate the value of something. This is different by saying, don't try to get the value of something when somebody's giving you a gift. So if I'm giving you something, don't try and say, well, how much did he spend on that? No, 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 that's rude. Just say, thank you. That's it. That's it. Don't estimate the value. Just say, thank you very much and walk away. Don't look in the horse's mouth when I give you a horse and go, hey, Charlie, I notice you walk to work every day. Here's a brand new horse. And you're like, oh, this horse is old. I'm like, you don't want the horse? I'll take it back. <laughs> just, just say thank you. All right. Now, finally, <clears throat> the pièce de résistance, the trap of the tree, the star of our lesson. I'll be there with bells on. If you're looking from the United, uh, United Kingdom, it's with knobs on. I'll be there with knobs on. <laughs> And what's the difference? Well, let's do the North American version. Uh, with bells on, I mean, I'll be there and I'll be happy. If you remember my hat, when I was singing, I came in with bells on my head. Okay, Christmas bells, Christmas bells. Yeah, see? So you can see me, if I come with bells on, okay, you'll hear them, you'll see them, you know, I'm happy to be at this party, the invitation you've given me, I'm thankful for it and I'm going to be there. So you might say, well, why do the UK people say knobs? Well, it means actually additional adornment. Adornment means something extra you're wearing. If you're adorned with something, you're wearing something extra. So in England, I would be additionally adorned with perhaps a handkerchief. Yes. I'll be there with knobs on. I might even carry my watch with me. Yes, I'll just put the watch around my neck. And I've got my knobs on now, eh? Right, let's go. We're at the party. Thanks for the invite. Right, so in England, knobs on means extra adornment, extra stuff. While in the uh, United States and Canada, it means happily doing it, okay? I'll be there with bells on. So, we've gone through our idioms <laughs> and the little extra one I put up there. So why don't we go, uh, well, we're going to do what we normally do, take a jump, because we've got uh, a t little test for you, and I want to give you a little extra, and of course, your homework. Are you ready? Let's go. Jingle bells, jingle bells, let's go to the board. All right, time to do a test. We did several idioms. And I want to see how well you understood them, or if you, at least you enjoyed my stories, 
how well you can answer my Christmas quiz. And the present from doing this is knowledge. Let's look at a little uh, speech that we got here. Mr. E is talking to James. So this will be myself. E's gone for now, but you know who he is. And we're talking about a Christmas party that's coming up. Bum ba da bum bum bum. So E says, hey James, do you want to help something this year? And I respond, sure. That sounds like fun. You really are in the something, Mr. E. And then he just says, hey, did you see that small package that Natalia put in your something by the fireplace? And I went, yeah, it can't be very much. It was very small. And then he says to me, hey, don't, because a lot of times, da, 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 da. And then he said, hey, don't be late for the party. And I said, hey, I'll be there, da, da, da. <laughs> so we've got a lot of spaces and we want to fill out some ideas. So the first thing was, do you want to help something this year? Now, I couldn't give you too much of a hint, but I'm going to help you here, okay? So at least you can start figuring out what idiom would it be. Hey, James, do you want to help something the tree this year? What is it going to be? That's right. Remember we talked about trimming the tree? Trim the tree, trim your hair, put in the extras making sure the tree fits. Okay, so we want to trim the tree this year. Second one. Sure, that sounds like fun. You were, really are in the... What is another way of saying a good mood or really enjoying the season? The holiday spirit. Okay. I get the, when they go tree trimming, they're talking about having a party. That's the holiday spirit. Community. Remember we talked about community coming together? What about the next one? Did you see that small package Natalia put in your something by the fireplace? Do you remember the story about the German girls? The German girls, yeah. Okay, stocking. The stockings were hung by the chimney. Chimney is another word for fireplace. It's the top of the fireplace. The fireplace is where the fire is, and when the fire, the smoke goes up, that's the chimney. And Santa Claus, that big fat guy, goes down that small hole. Don't ask me about the physics of this thing. You're supposed to just believe it happens, and he brings presents to everyone within 24-hour period. And you also believe all the lies your politicians tell you too. So it's all good. It's all good. All right. So next. <clears throat> yeah, it can't be very much. It was very small. Okay. That's my response because it was small. But that's why it went in the stocking. Remember we said small presents go in the stocking. And then E says, don't what? <laughs> that's the only hint I can give you. All right. Don't. Look, a uh, gift horse in its mouth, right? Don't look a gift horse in its mouth. Remember the gift horse? Because you're looking at the teeth to see value. Don't do that. And remember, that's right. Big or good things. Come in little or small packages. There's a C here. Packages. Think about a lottery ticket. One ticket can make you a million. Ding! Old G lottery. I'm doing a plug for them. <laughs> Ad, advertisement. And then finally, what do I say? Because I'm happy and I want to go and I really want to go there and I'm happy to go to this party and accepting this invitation. There. I'll be there with bells on. Cool. Not bad. You did well in your Christmas quiz. That means you don't get a lump of coal in your stocking. You'll get those gold chocolate coins. 
lucky you. Now let's do our extra. Uh, so what I want to talk about is the non-holiday use of some of these idioms. This is a Christmas video, and you're probably watching around Christmas time, maybe not, it could be summer wherever you are. Um, but some of these idioms don't have to be used just at Christmas time, funny enough. Now, white Christmas, of course, you can't really use it for anything but Christmas. But let's take a look at the board. When you say Christmas came early, you can use that for any time you get an unexpected gift or good luck. So it could be in uh, June and uh, I'm you know, applying for a job, uh, you know, whatever job, and then all of a sudden the, the guy who owns Apple company comes and goes, hey, I want to give you a job because you're the best. I'm like, wow, Christmas came early. That was completely unexpected. It has nothing to do with Christmas, but it means I've gotten a gift earlier than I anticipated or expected, or it's completely unexpected. Now, the second one, be there with bells on, that I ended with, you can use that when somebody says, hey, do you think you can get that assignment done for me? You go, yeah, I'll get it done with bells on, which means I'm happy and excited to do it. So you'll hear people say it not just at Christmas, but it is a Christmas idiom. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You could, if you were listening, you could automatically see, well, that one would be something I could use at any time because it means you're being ungrateful because someone has given it something to you and you're questioning it or not just saying thank you and I appreciate it, All right? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. If someone's giving you something as a gift and it has value to you, thank you is what you should say. And also, good things come in small packages. Similar, but it's saying you have no idea what you're being given just because of the size of it. And how many people have opened a big box to find there's a nothing inside of it, not very much, right? You know, oh, ugly sweater, again. Thank you, Uncle Donald. <laughs> but it's a big package, and then you get a small package, and it's got car keys. Thank you, Uncle Donald! <laughs> right? Anyway, that's the extra, so you can use these non-holiday. So this lesson, even though if you're watching at Christmas, they're great to make you, you know, in with the culture and make people go, I am very hip. I know the good thing about the teeth and the horse in the small package, yeah? It's like, no, 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 no. Good things come in small packages. Horses have teeth. Very different. Now you know the difference, but you can also use them outside of Christmas. You can use them for Easter. You can use them for Thanksgiving. Anytime you want, just pull those cards out. Now, before I go, I'm going to say what your homework is. If this is the Christmas season, you need to go to a party and enjoy yourself. What? Yeah. Use some of these things when you're there. Like, hey, um, thanks for inviting me to the party. Are we going to be trimming the tree this year? Well, yeah, no, we've already done that, but uh, you can come to the party. Well, I'll be there with bells on. And uh, are we supposed to bring stocking stuffers to the party? No, no, don't worry about it. No. Any gift is appreciated. We don't look gift horses in the mouth. I speak English, so I've just taken all of these and just thrown them at you. You need to learn them so that you can use them too. And on that note, I want to say, first of all, thank you for watching this video. And I would like you to subscribe so you can look around somewhere here. Subscribe, press the subscribe button. There's a bell, ding my bell, and you'll get my latest video come straight to you whenever it's ready. Uh, don't forget to go to do the real quiz at ingvid, www.ing.vid.com. Ingvid, you'll see my video and other teachers who are equally as talented, or more talented in some cases, and uh, you'll enjoy their work as well. So I bid you adieu. Thank you very much. Oh, it's been a long day without you, my friend. I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. It's been a long day where we began. Let me tell you all about it.